It's the last nation of the world like America is. We should be able to say this is the time when the world is going to collapse, that the world cannot pass this. And this is not the first generation. This is the final generation. Are we in that generation right now? Yes or no? Yes. I'm telling you we are. And I'm telling you 2025 plus or minus tells us this. Now, we don't have the time to go through all the evidence, but Shiloh, we're watching this. Not back there. We're watching this. Now, watch. There's something in the nation that God wants us to see as a what? Talk to me. Crosshair to give us accuracy. To give us what? How can we be accurate that the nation was getting ready to come down? Just like Daniel was when he saw the handwriting on the wall. Many, many, tekel, your farce. Now, my brothers and sisters, inspiration says Satan has the ability to suggest doubts, to devise objections to the point of testimony that God sends, and many think it a virtue, a mark of intelligence in them, to be unbelieving and to what? Question, Question and quibble. Those who desire to doubt will have what? Amen. So somebody can say, well, I don't believe that God gives us a, a lot of time. Well, you can doubt and you can make it up. Then the evidence is in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. It's clear. You can go to nation after nation and see it. But if someone wants to doubt, God's not going to try to stop that. It says, those who desire to doubt will have plenty of room. God does not even propose to remove all occasion for unbelief. But what does he do? Talk to me, somebody. He gives evidence. Now, is that faith? Yes or no? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, verse 1. So it says, which must be carefully investigated. With not a proud mind, you can't teach me anything, but with a what? Humble mind and a what? Teachable spirit. All should decide from the weight. weight of evidence. So if someone says, according to the Bible, we see it, there's a limit, and they said that limit is 20, 25, plus or minus, you shouldn't just mean, oh, no, that's not so. And you say, well, what did you study? Well, I didn't study anything, but I just don't think it's so. You can't do that. You should be able to go back and say, well, let's look at the evidence. Why do the thinking men say this? Why do the anthropologists? Why do the economists? Why does the historian? Why does the collapsologist? Why does the one who studies every field of knowledge say the same thing? And then the Bible tells us the same thing. Why is it so? When you look at the weight of evidence, evidence is stacked upon evidence. It says all should decide from the weight of evidence. God gives what? Sufficient, Sufficient evidence for the candid mind to believe. But he who turns from the weight of evidence, because there are a what? Few things which he cannot make plain to his finite understanding will be left in the cold, chilling atmosphere of unbelief and questioning doubts and will make what? Shipwreck. You know that even though it may be clear, hundreds of texts, hundreds of quotations, hundreds of history examples, and it's clear, and you point to me to one quotation you don't fully understand. One place in history you don't fully understand. Two places that you don't fully understand. But you look at these hundreds of clear examples, which one is the weight of evidence? Which one? The clear, the clear over and over again, even if you couldn't explain those, uh, the intelligence one still uses the weight of and that's how God tells us that we can look at this accuracy. And when you look at that, you can see this. But this morning, I'm not studying with you the weight of evidence of 2025 plus or minus. That's not what I'm studying. We've studied that weeks before, and we've looked at many examples of that, but that's not what I'm studying you. I'm studying you right now that even if you didn't have the expiration date, plus or minus, you can look at green fuzz. You understand? You don't need an expiration date for that. Am I right? So now, my brothers and sisters, this is what we're studying before we conclude this morning. These are expiration dates. Now, here's a nutrition magazine written in 2020. Watch what it says. Trash it or eat, eat it. The truth <laughs> about expiration dates. What is it called? <laughs> the the truth. truth about expiration dates. Now, it's amazing that sometimes the newspaper has to tell us what we won't believe from the minister or from the Bible or from the prophets. It says, how long is it really safe to keep foods? Now, in this egg here, it says, used by what? October 16th. <laughs> the label on the egg in your fridge says best buy yesterday's date. Is it safe to make one last omelet? Mm -hmm. Now, if you heard the third angel message, you know it's not safe. But that's a whole other study. But now this says, here's a, something real simple. Let's make it real simple. <laughs> Food expiration dates refer to quality, not safety, which means eggs, milk, and, uh, and more are generally good to eat when? Oh. After the date on their packaging. Watch it. So somebody says, oh, man, well, then that means that we have a little bit more time. We don't have to worry about what's happening. Now, watch. In order to reduce food waste, acronym FSIS recommends that regardless of the date, consumers, let me read that again. Regardless of the date, consumers should what? Evaluate, Evaluate the quality of the food. Green fuzz. Before deciding to eat it or 
In other words, before plus or minus, look at the fuss. The one exception is infant formula. So what exactly do expiration dates mean then? And how long is food really good for? With help from, what's that next word? Now, every time you go to a field of knowledge, always listen first if it's an expert or an ignorant man. You know, <laughs> This expert on product manufacture is real simple, compiled this simple guy to read the expiration dates and when to worry about food safety so that you can shop smarter. Now watch it now. How long are foods good after? It says, you can tell if the food is spoiled, if it has an off what? Odor. Odor. Flavor or texture. You can smell it. You can see it. You can taste it. And so my brothers and sisters, when you have a nation, you want to know it's getting ready to collapse, even if you don't know a date, you can smell it. You can taste it. You can see it. And if your eyes are open, you can see what's happening in the United States of America right now in 2023. You better watch it. You better hold your seat. Now, watch what it says now. Now, here's a, a piece of meat. Now, you didn't, let's say you didn't know about the third angel's message. You, didn't, you weren't in the class on health reform, medical missionary work. You didn't know that you couldn't take that in the most holy place. You didn't know that. Does God hold it against you if you didn't know that? If a man's eating meat and he has never been taught the dangers physically and spiritually that meat opposed to his system, does God condemn that man? No. God is not interested in condemnation, but in what? Education. Education. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But God wants to educate us. And the third angel educates us on health reform. Now, we're not studying that. So this man, he's never heard the third angel. He's never heard of health reform. He's never heard of medical missionary work. He's never heard of any of these things. So he's eating meat. But if he goes to his refrigerator and sees this brother or sister, does he eat it if he's intelligent? No. <laughs> All right, well, let's put up something else. Oh. Oh. Well, here's some maggots coming out of that thing. Mm. You see it, Brother Bill, that maggot? Mm. <laughs> here's, here's a maggot right there. Mm. And another maggot, and another maggot, and another maggot, and another maggot, and another maggot. Now, I want to ask you a question. Does that man need to pick up the, 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 the label and look at the expiration date? Does he need to do that? What does he do, Brother Tim? He says, it's over. <laughs> you know what he says? Many, many. many. <laughs> now, my brothers, the number for this, the expiration date is already here. You don't have to look at a date. You can look and visibly see by the event that we are here. Let me put that off the screen now. All right, someone says, well, I've got the third angel's message, and I know now plant-based diet is the diet, and it is the diet, plant-based diet, but guess what? Even that plant, why we are on this earth, can expire. Am I right? And you say, well, look, it's amazing when you, that plant make you be able to see plain, you know? <laughs> you can, now, that meat you couldn't see so well, but that plant, you can see it plainly. Now, look at the plant. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you need to look at the back and say, what's the expiration date of that banana? Someone says, well, I like tomatoes, so let me just look at the expiration date. Let me look for that. Is that what you have to do? No. You can see the green fuss. No. You can smell it. No. You can taste it. If you are brave enough, you could taste it. No. I hope that you and I don't have to taste the final generation before we believe it. Oh, mercy. I hope we don't have to see the sunny law passed mm. before we know we're the generation that's going to see the sunny law. I hope we don't have to see the time of trouble put us in prison, put us tortured, kill us before we believe this is the time. We're wasting time. We're not getting our children and our families. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to wonder about the expiration date. And all you got to do is know, do you see the green fuss? Do you understand? So what we have to do is we conclude. What we have to do is we conclude. There are many green fuzzes. Did you hear what I said? I mean, if you go back, that's not just one. You don't, I mean, if there's one, somebody said, well, that's one. Let's just scrape that off. No, no, don't scrape it off. It's not okay. No. So, but there's many. I can show you many, many, many different green fuzzes. There's not time. I'm only going to look at one today for sake of time. Just one. How many? One. Not because there's not more than one, but because time would not allow. Time would fail us as we looked at example after example after example. When you see this, that this generation cannot pass. We're the generation. Now, let's look at one example. Now, here, here's a chart. This, these experts put together a food expiration. What's the next word? Date. So that you can look at different foods and see their different times, just like nations. And nobody says, time set us. Everybody respects these expert conclusions. Why do we do that in the natural and don't believe it in the spiritual? Something's wrong with us, brothers and sisters. Now, here's an article from 2021. It says, the average empire survives for how long? 
for 250 years. He is America at what? Death, Death door. Now all you got to do is just a little math. When did America come on the scene as a nation? When did she declare independence? 1776. All you got to do is add 250 years. Because look what happens now. Look what this says. We've looked at this before. We saw in history. We saw how inspiration told us to study history. We, told what, we saw what inspiration told us to look at. Now, let me back up. We'll go a little further. Now, what is 1776? If I were to add 1776 and put 250 years and add that to it, what would I get? 2024. I would get 2026. Which is 2025 what? Plus or minus. Now, what he got this from, and I'll show you before we close. This man is not making up this number. He's not just making up a number. He's not a, a, a time setter. He's a historian. And what the historians do, they look at history. And they look at nations. Now, he looked at all as many nations as he can find around the world, as many as he can look at. And he looked at them in every part of the world, no matter what their technology, their background, their understanding. And he studied how long they existed and averaged up the amount of time that the nation existed. And one after another for 4,000 years, it has been accurate that the average span of a nation is 250 years. Plus, or minus. This is expert understanding. Now, my brothers and sisters, when you do that, then you notice that whenever a nation reaches that time, it's ready to fall either a little bit before or a little after. And so when you look at America and you look at 1776 and you look at 250 years and you look at 2026, you've got to say in 2022, we must be coming close to the nation collapsing. Mm -hmm. And if so, some green fuzz should be appearing. That's not the green fuzz. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking to you now, that's not the green fuzz. This is an expiration date I'm, that we're looking at now. That's not the green fuzz. But history shows that 2025 plus or minus. Now look what it says. The apocalyptic vision behind Putin's what? Golden billion. Now when I was gone, Putin said something. I said, I hope my church is watching. I hope my little church is watching at Rich Lands. Putin made an expression. He said, golden billion. Now, my brothers and sisters, have you heard the word golden billion? Now, if you were at me, I knew you heard it. <laughs> but if you weren't at me, did you hear the word? Now, now, this is what the man said. Now, watch. Watch. This is the apocalyptic vision. This is Washington Post, 2022. We've got to find out where we are in 2022. It says, for Russian President Vladimir Putin, a two-word phrase sums up the current state of the world's geopolitics. All the nations, he said. You can summarize all world events by the expression golden building. That's what Putin said. Now, is Putin an ignorant man? No. Uh, regardless of you, what you may want to say, Putin is not an ignorant man. He's very intelligent, highly. Now, he doesn't make right decisions all the time, but he's a highly intelligent man. Someone said, how could that be? Well, you're highly intelligent too, but you don't always make the wrong, right decision. Am I right? It's like you and I. But it says, speaking this week in Moscow, Putin declared that the model of total domination of the so-called golden billion is what? Why should this golden billion of all the population on the globe dominate on everyone and, uh, over everyone and impose its own rules of what? Now, I want to tell you something. I don't have time to study with you in detail the golden billion, but I'll give you a, a little understanding. Golden billion was a phrase that was made popular by one historian that wrote in Russia that became around the world. And his thinking was that the West has a plot, a conspiracy to destroy the rest of the world population and only leave one billion people on the planet so that they have enough resources, that, that the world's resources, that the world's goods is not enough to support seven billion plus people. And the only way that uh, people can enjoy the resources is that you have to eliminate everybody but one billion on the planet, and one billion is the to about the number of what the Western countries represent, North America, uh, Europe, uh, 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 the UK, all the, the UK and what have you. Now, so he said, this is the plot of what the West is doing. Now, my brothers and sisters, he said with that, that the world be wiped out and leave. How many people left? How many people? One million. One billion. Someone says, oh, Putin, you're just making something up. Now, I, I'm not saying I agree with the man. I'm just trying to say, don't put this by your mind and don't recognize that the devil himself has a plot. Mm. Now, the question would be, is there anything that tells us that that might happen? Now, someone said, well, okay. For, uh, let me ask you a question. How many people in the, in the world right now? How many people in the world right now? Seven billion. Over seven billion. So then, almost eight. What would you, now, by the way, it becomes eight billion in 2025. Mm -hmm. Plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. God will have his people 
the generation that sees 8 billion, you already know you're in the limit generation. That generation will not pass. Mm. Now, my brothers and sisters, well, listen, listen. Mm. Now, what, I, what we're showing you is that if 7 billion plus on the planet, how many people would you have to wipe out in order to have 1 billion? So you would have to have a 6 billion wipeout. What would you call that? What would you call that if 6 billion people were wiped out? That would be a mass extinction. That would be tremendous. That would be a world crisis, a catastrophe. But someone says, oh, we don't have to worry about that. We have enough resources that this would never happen. Now watch. Here's something from popular science, not a Bible magazine. It says, 40 years after its initial publication, a study called what? The limits, the limits to growth looks depressingly prescient. They made this study in what year? 1972. This is a 1972 study. They didn't make it up in 2000 or 2015. This is over 40 year study. It says, it found that if civilization continue on its path toward increasing consumption, not America, but what? The global economy. Not talking about money, it's talking about the, the whole structure of the world. The global economy would collapse by what? 2030. 2025 plus or? Minus. This is what the scientists found out by looking at things. Now let's see what, they, let's see what they're talking about. It says, as, restored, as it reported by the Australian broadcaster ABC, the model's calculation just set dates. Is that what it says? It took into account what? Trends. That, in other words, the movements in pollution levels. So it looked at pollution. What would you call that study of pollution? Atmosphere study, good. It says, what else? Population growth. What else? The amount of what? Now, are our resources limited, yes or no? Yes. Do we have an unlimited amount of water? No. That's why in Colorado today that they're limiting in California, and it's going to become worldwide. Do you know that if you don't have a way of getting water without buying and selling, you're going to be in a very terrible place in just a little while? Mm -hmm. That if you have to buy and sell in order to have water from the community, from the government, you're going to be in trouble in just a little while. You better have a way of getting water yourself, naturally. God tells us how to do it. Now, my brothers and sisters, but look, that, that's holding another step. My point is, natural resources. What about food? In a little while, if you don't have a way of growing your own food, in a little while, we're going to be in trouble. Did God give us instruction of where to go and what to do so that we can have food and water, yes or no? Yes. Now, my brothers and sisters, it says, oh, somebody says, but don't you know that Bible text says that God said that bread will be given us, our water will be? Sure. What does the rest of the verse say? Now, it's interesting that a man will quote a verse and won't quote the whole verse. If you read the rest of the verse, then you recognize it's not talking about for you right now. <laughs> you will recognize that that's talking about a particular time. The verse itself, talking about Bible training. Right now, God has given us instruction of what we're supposed to do. Now, the model's predictions for the worsening quality of life and dwindling natural resources has so far been what? You know what it's telling us? From 1972, if you were to track it, and I saw it myself, I tracked it historically. From 1972 forward, do you know that almost exactly what they predicted took place? For 40 years. Exactly. Why would it change right now? And the only way it could change is that the people who are living will have to change their course. And the people are not getting better. You know what we're doing with our researches? We're getting what? Worse. Worse. <coughs> now watch now. It says, in <coughs> fact, 2020 is the... Now, this is 1972 they write this. 1972. But nothing happened in 2020, so we don't have to worry about that. We looked at this article before 2020. It says, in fact, 2020 is the first milestone envisioned by World One. That's the computer that put all this information together. That's when the quality of life is supposed to drop what? But nothing happened in 2020 to the quality of life, or did it? Many, many. It says the broadcaster presented this scenario that will lead to the demise of what? Large numbers of people. But there was not a large group of people that were wiped out in 2020 by a disease. Nothing happened like that. So we don't have to worry about billions being wiped out. And it's only supposed to be, 2020 is not the end. 2020 is only the beginning. beginning. So we don't have to worry about more diseases coming. No, no, don't worry about monkey pox and all the other rest. There's, there's, there's nothing going to happen. Or is it? So my brothers and sisters, inspiration has told us these things. And around 2020, the condition of the planet becomes what? If we do, nothing. come on, there's a, you know, that gap between knowing and doing is not just in the church, it's in the world. The world knows us, but are doing nothing. 
It says, if we do nothing about it, the quality of life goes down to zero. Pollution becomes so serious, it will start to kill people, which in turn will cause the population to diminish lower than it was in 1900. When I read that so many years ago, well, if you're intelligent, what would you do if you read that? I would say in my mind, what was the population in 1900 so I can get an understanding of what this man is talking about? If you're intelligent, you do this. And I looked it up. Guess what the population was in 1900? Less than 2 billion, which sounds like what? Talk to me, somebody. Closer to 1 billion. What this article was telling us over 40 years ago was that what it looked like is that we're going to see a problem that begins in 2020 that will end up plus or minus in just a few short years leading up to 2030, plus or minus, that we will see almost, uh, what it said here, 6 billion of the population wiped out. Now someone says, could that ever happen? How much of the population do you think is going to be wiped out? Now I'm going to tell you something. Now if, if, if that much of the population are wiped out, you would call that an extinction. Am I right? You know that the extinction, the scientists say also, they believe in human extinction. Many of them have said that have studied this also, 2025 20, plus or minus. <coughs> but that's not what we're studying. <laughs> extinction. Now, scientists agree the world faces what? Mass, mass extinction. Scientists agree. Here we go again, Earth's major mass extinction. This is 2019. This says human extinction by what? 2020. Now, what was the date of the how long a nation lasts? 250 years, plus or minus. 2026. Why are all of the things coming to this? A last ditch strategy to fight what? But I'm not studying that. We, another time we'll study this. But let me just show you this. There's almost unanimous agreement among climate scientists and organizations that, that 97% of over 10,000 climate scientists, that's not just one scientist in the corner somewhere, and the various scientific or organizations engaged in climate science, what? Research. What somebody says, well, I don't see how you can come up with 2026. I don't see how. Then you ask them, well, have you studied hmm. climate research? Well, no, I haven't studied it, but I just can't see 2026. Well, that's not evidence. That's ignorance. Mm -hmm. Now, this says, however, Rebecca, what evidence of the climate catastrophe? Let me see if we can get there. The evidence in relation to the destruction of the Earth's biosphere leading to ongoing and rapid degradation of all ecosystems and their services is readily what? Available, available and what else? Overwhelming. So it says, what is available to us? Of the, as an insignificant amount of the vast, what's that next word? Evidence. What does the prophet tell us? Weight of evidence. It says there's, no, there's a notable group of prominent climate scientists who present, what's the next two words? Compelling <coughs> evidence that human extinction will occur by 2026. This is not some peons. These are experts. Research looking at the world around them, and God said it will be visible. Now go to Matthew 24. Let's go there quickly. Go to Matthew 24. Or you should be there. Praise the Lord. Matthew 24, look what the Bible says, beginning in verse 21. In the last days, in the final generation, what does the Bible say is going to take place? It says in verse 21, for then shall be what, everybody? Great, Great tribulation, tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor what ever, ever shall be. Verse 22, and except those days should be what? So there's going to be a time of trouble such as never was that except those days should be what? There should no flesh be saved. I want to ask you a question. If there's no flesh, what would you call that? Extinction. And the Bible says that unless God were to shorten the world, the limit of the world, that human extinction would take place. So now my brothers and sisters, that's telling us then that when we see evidence of when they believe human extinction is going to take place, we see evidence of the time frame and when Christ is going to come and cut it short. Because my question is, will there ever be a time when there's no flesh on this earth? Will there ever be a time? Yes. When is that time? Then shall the Lord descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall what? Rise first. So the righteous dead, resurrected at the coming of Christ. The righteous living, caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And then shall we? And we're going up to heaven for how long? A thousand years. 
Righteous dead, righteous living in heaven. The wicked that are alive when Christ comes, what happens? They are strained, slain, slain by the brightness of his coming. They die. No longer on the earth. The dead that are in the grave that are wicked, what are they going to do? Remain where? In the grave. So that at the coming of Christ, no flesh will be on the earth. Now, why is that important, brethren and sisters? The reason why this is important, no flesh happens at the second what? Advent. And this happens to bring the day of atonement, not to a beginning, but to bring a day of atonement to what? You know, in Leviticus 16, the Bible says that at the very end of time, that the scapegoat is going to be brought by the fit man into the wilderness. Into the what? Wilderness. Now, what is a wilderness according to Scripture? What is a wilderness? A place where there's no flesh doing what? Inhabiting. Oh, there may be a de desert turtle somewhere, you know. <laughs> but no flesh. Look at Leviticus. Let me show you that. Go to Leviticus 16 quickly. Many texts. We can't go through all of them. In Leviticus 16, you know the whole chapter is the Day of Atonement. At the end of the Day of Atonement, something happens in verse 20. In Leviticus 16, verse 20, the Bible says, And when ye have made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, speaking of the most holy and holy, he shall bring the live goat. Who's the live goat represent? Talk to me, somebody. Satan. Verse 21. Leviticus 16, 21. And Aaron shall lay how many of his hands? Now, who was Aaron? He was the what? High priest. Who does the high priest represent? Jesus. He shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a where? So at the end of the Day of Atonement, the priest takes the scapegoat Satan into the wilderness. That's not the beginning of the Day of Atonement. That is the October 22nd, 1844. Jesus begins the Day of Atonement. October 22nd, 1844. We're in 2022. The Day of Atonement is not over. But before the Day of Atonement must end, there must be an antitypical wilderness. Just like there's an antitypical priest Christ, an antitypical goat Satan, an antitypical wilderness. Well, what is the wilderness? Let's look. Verse 22. Three. Uh, 22. Verse 22. Leviticus 16, 22. It says, And the goat shall bear upon him, how much? Oh, All yeah. their iniquities unto a land. Talk to me, somebody. Not inhabited. So if people were there and they're not there now, what would you call that? Extinction. Amen. So to my brothers and sisters, it says, into a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat where? Now, if we multiply scripture, we don't have time today, but if we multiply scripture, we'll see that that not inhabited is talking about human flesh. The text of the Bible show us when you go into it. Text of the text. Just look up wilderness and, and not inhabited. You'll see it. It's talking about no flesh shall inhabit. So now, my brothers and sisters, that is telling us that the Day of Atonement can never close until we have a situation of no flesh. So as we see the population being destroyed, you know what it's telling us we're coming to? Not the beginning of the Day of Atonement, but the end. And so my brothers and sisters, what that tells us is, if scientists are saying if God, and they don't know about God like this, but they're saying that if God doesn't do nothing, about 2026 20, plus or minus, what this is telling us that we are approaching in 2026 20, plus or minus the end of the day of and Let's get ready to conclude. That's the sanctuary. That's the scapegoat being led out by the fit man. Now, what does the fit man mean? Time. Timely man. Now, we studied all this. A man that comes on time. Watch it now. My brothers and sisters, this is what the thinking men were talking about. Now, look. A radical theory says major crisis remake America what? Every 80 years. Every 80 years. Now, if you study American history from 1776 all the way through, you can go back. You can, you, in fact, you can go back to 1705 when you just had pilgrims, colonists on the earth. You can go back to 1705 and start going forward, and you'll see every 80 years there was a crisis. From 1705, you go forward and you add 80 years. What do you get to? Talk to me, somebody. You get a 1785. 1785 was a crisis going on in America, yes or no? 1785, plus or minus, what was happening? Talk to me. The American what? Revolution. revolution. The same revolution that caused America to declare independence. We were in the midst of a revolution. That was a crisis. If I go 80 years past 1785, what's 1785 plus 80 years? Talk to me, somebody. 
1865. What was happening in America in 1865? The Civil War. Is that a crisis, yes or no? That's a crisis. If I add 80 years from 1865, I add 80 years, where, where does that take me? 1865 plus 80 years, where does that take me? That takes me to 1945. What was happening in America? We're coming to the end of World War I. World War II, greatest war in the world. Now, my brothers and sisters, every 80 years, historically, something has happened in America. And, and historians know this. But now, now, if I add 80 years to 1945, what do I get? 2025. So, my brothers and sisters, historically, from the time America declared her independence and before, we should expect historically to see right now, as we're in 2025, plus or minus, something happening of world crisis proportion. Now, my brothers and sisters, has anything begun to happen? Because I'm talking about green plus. Does life in America generally get better over time, or does history really repeat itself? This is history. The wise men said, as it had been, so shall it be, nothing new under the sun. More specifically, do horrible events keep plaguing the country, what? Every 80 years. The climax of the event would happen around 2020, and the resolution around what? This is what historians have been saying. Now, my brothers and sisters, all we got to do then is look, did something happen to tell us that this is on time? The war and what? Watch it. Text of Ukrainian President Zelensky, virtual address to Congress. This is 20, what's the year of this? Now, remember, what we're doing is looking at the green fuzz. Look what it says. It says, Russia has turned the Ukrainian sky into a source of death for thousands of people. Russian troops have already fired nearly how many? A thousand missiles of Ukraine. This is the president addressing the world. And countless bombs. <coughs> They use drones to kill us with precision. Let's read this together. This is a terror that Europe has not seen for what? 80 years. 80 years. The war in Ukraine happened on, when was the last time they saw this? 1945. Now, my brothers and sisters, that meant that the war in Ukraine is a part of the green buzz telling us that you better not wait until 2025. Because this 80-year period, remember, a winner can start early or late. And as you look at the evidence, you begin to start seeing something. Now, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> is the U.S. heading to a second civil war, yes or no? Yes. This says, among the notable signs, the points are, and how civil wars start, these experts are looking at it, it says, people who study the origins of civil wars see indicators that the U.S. is on the what? Now, why is that important to us? Listen to me, listen to me, look very carefully. The last political condition in America the last political condition in America before the National Sunday Law is a civil war. That's the last green fuss. That what we have to see in America before the Sunday Law, that green fuzz, is not the date. The green fuzz is what? Civil what? War. So if I can see the civil war, I don't even have to worry about the date. When I mean don't worry about the date, I mean that that means that it is not far away, that it could be actually closer than we, you know, if you look in the mirror, you know what the mayor says? Objects in the mirror are what? Closer than you think. Now look what it says. Or those who study the origin of civil wars indicators that U.S. is on the brink of conflict, Yale historian says. It says, Yale history, Professor Timothy Snyder spoke with Insider about the future of American democracy. Snyder said he thinks it's even more likely that the U.S. could cease to what? Exist. Though the idea of another civil war in the near future seems far-fetched to what? Many Americans People who, what does that tell us about most Americans? <laughs> we're not studying. So if you tell me about climate and you say, I don't see how we could have an extinction, well, you're not studying it. If you tell me, I don't see how we could have a civil war, that just means you're not what? Because those who study, such conflicts might disagree. According to Timothy Snyder, history professor, a history professor at Yale University, in other words, the experts, they see things differently. In fact, it says Snyder, what's the next word? An expert on the rise of authoritarianism discussed the future of America in an interview with Insider, during which he said he fears the U.S. might not survive if former President Donald Trump runs again in what? 20. So what is his idea of when he sees the, tw uh, uh, the Civil War getting ready to take place? What's his idea? 2024. So we are looking back at 2025, what, plus or? Minus. So now my brothers and sisters, the historians, the experts all see this, not based on prophecy. They're looking at the nations that the prophet told us they would look at. They're looking at science. They're looking at history. They're looking at economy. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is what experts say. And if you understand coming events like the jigsaw puzzle, you know where the pieces what? Go. Now, if you get to the last piece, 
Even a child can come in and do what? Now the man, he may have been looking at a thousand piece puzzle, studying it for three days, a week. And all of a sudden, a little child comes in. In five minutes, he picks up the piece. And he doesn't, he kind of turns it around in his hands. All of a sudden, Micah, he turns it around long enough, and guess what he does? He puts it in the right place. Now, my brothers and sisters, those who understand the prophecy know that final piece, the last act in the drama, is the National Sunday Law. But just before that comes something. In India, what else? China, what else? Russia, what else? The cities of what? Now, a question. In the war in Ukraine, did it bring all these powers into existence? Yes or no? It says, the money men, because they have the power, control the market. It says, thousands of men and women are dying of what? They purchase at, at, at low rates <coughs> all they can obtain and then sell at what? Great. Greatly increased prices. I'm, I can't go on that right now, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a price rise that's getting ready. Do you, do you understand that everything in society has gone up by 300%? And do you know because we're in a global uh, 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 chain society, that's a result that everything that comes from, comes from, doesn't come from here, it comes from around the world, which means that when you start talking about fuel that is over in Russia and Ukraine, we start talking about food and resources. My brothers and sisters, everything we have has skyrocketed. The problem of buying and selling is just before us. It says, this means, what's the next word? Starvation. starvation. Now, if you want to have starvation, what does that tell us is getting ready to happen? What type of crisis? Food crisis. But we don't hear anything about a food crisis on the news. You don't have to worry about that. You can just go down to Kroger's and Walmart, and they'll give you all the food you need. Is that right? Nope. You can't even get it now. Mm. What's going to happen then? So God has given us work so that we can prepare. The messenger is to prepare us, but if we know something, but we'll not do it. Then all we're doing is preparing ourselves for failure, brothers and sisters. Mm. Now watch. This means starvation to the poor classes, and what's the next word? Mm. Will result. Past, present, or future? future? Future. What year is this written? 1899. That's not talking about the Civil War of 1865. The prophet says in the future we'll see a civil war. There will be a, what's after the civil war? Time, Time, Time of, of trouble, trouble, such as? Yeah. That's where... The no flesh, if it wasn't shortened, would take place. Now, my brothers and sisters, the priests, when there's a time of trouble such as never was, Michael should stand up. That's Daniel 12, 1. When Michael stands up, is he working in the most holy place starting or finishing? finishing. So what is an indication that the work in the most holy place is about to end? Civil war. So my brothers and sisters, if the time of trouble when Michael stands up and probation closes, the work in the most holy place finishes, the day of atonement comes to an end, is about to take place, what should I see in America? Talk to me, somebody. Civil war. What should I see in the world? Revolution. Now, my brothers and sisters, that means that to say that if we want to know if the day of atonement is about to end, if America is getting ready to come to an end, we need to look and find out. We need to look and find out, do we see civil war? Because then without a date, you can look at the green fuzz. So civil war is our green what? Now, there are many green fusses. This is just one of them. The average American empire survives 250 years. Is America at death's door? Question Is she at death's door right now? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. America's what? Expiration. Expiration date. Fox News. Will U.S. collapse in what? 2026. Many, many. There are a lot of times come to an end. Now, look what it says. This is a research uh, 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 article from 2016. Regardless of financial strength, political power, knowledge of previous history life cycles, no empire leader has ever been able to prevent his supremacy from what? Right. Now, Nebuchadnezzar thought he was going to do it by making an image all of gold. But he didn't stop Babylon from going down. For instance, the successive Chinese dynasties were all, would always rise, stay, and fall regardless of lessons learned from the past. In 1977, Sir John Glubb wrote an essay called The Fate of Empires. During three millennia, over 4,000 years, the average superpower's duration period has been consistently of about what? Talk to me. This 250 year duration presents an unexpected consistency, especially if we consider that all the major changes during the 3,000 years in transportation speed, weapons from local to global, that regardless of all this, the 250 year limit has been consistently the average lifespan. That tells us then that America is about to go what? Down. Down. Now, my brothers and sisters, all we need to do then is look at the green fuss. Now, watch what this says. In the coming Second American Civil War, which side are you what? Aww. Now, why is this important? Someone said, oh, we're just studying Civil War. No, we're not just studying Civil War. Civil War is a green what? Right. Not literally, but it's evidence that it's all about to come to an end. Now, look at this now. If there's a Second American Civil War, which side would you choose? It may be wise to make the decision now. A recent public opinion poll at the University of Virginia Center for Politics finds that a majority of Trump voters want to succeed from the? Alarmingly, nearly as many Biden voters, 41%, also want to split the country. Now, follow what it's saying. 
that whether you're a Democrat or Republican in the Civil War, it's still in your eyesight. It says this is part of a larger pattern. Polls and research have come to similar what? So the evidence is always the same. It says it's important to resist false equivalence and superficial analysis here. Today's Republican Party has in, in practice largely surrendered to neo-fascism and white supremacy, currents that were not far below its surface for many years. It has embraced and condoned the violence of January 6th insurrection. Now, regardless of what your belief is on the January 6th insurrection, the result is civil war is the thought that's in mind as a solution. Now watch. This says, in 2021, how civil war what? Started. Now I want you to think about this now. Just think. Why did this insurrection happen in 2021? Because remember, as we saw, everything would begin, not in 2021, everything would begin in 20 what? 20. That was the beginning. We studied that. Now my brother says 20, from 2020 forward, it's just getting worse and worse. 2021, in the first week, we saw it. Now my brothers and sisters, three factors come into play. The United States demonstrates what? In other words, when the historians, experts study civil wars, it says there are three main factors in America. has all three factors. Now, until quite recently, a civil war seemed all but impossible in the what? So in the United States, something of the past. But the prophet told us over 100 years before, for most citizens, not of the future. But the capital insurrection on January 6th and the rise of violent domestic extremism have set off what? Alarm. Now, what's on the bottom of the priest's garment when he moves? Talk to me. What's on the the Civil War should be a sounding that the priest is getting ready to move and finish his work. Mm -hmm. Now, my brothers and sisters, look now. We're not studying this. We looked at it before. I'm coming to a point to close. General warns a divide, military impossible what? Civil in the next U.S. coup. Mm -hmm. Three retired U.S. generals, not peons, mm -hmm. warned in a chilling column Friday that another coup attempted in America in what? Now, what are they looking at? We're looking at the same 2025 plus or? I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. But what if I see green fuzz? Do I wait to 2026? Mm -hmm. Or 2027? Or 2029? Do I wait to plus? Yeah. Now, watch now. An age of discord. Looking ahead, one year after the Capitol insurrection. This is 2022 now. It says, so far, it says in 2010, Peter Turkin, remember the anthropologist, a professor in the Department of Ecology, Biology, and Mathematics, published an essay in Nature in which he made the case that what? 2020. 2020 could see the start of a decade of instability. So this anthropologist, mathematician, historian, said in 2010 that 2020 was going to begin a crisis that was going to get worse and worse. Now, my brother and sister, did it happen, yes or no? Yes. Is it happening right now? Yes. Now, watch what it says. So far, Turkin's predictions are holding true. As 2020 saw the start of COVID-19 pandemic, 2021 kicked off an attack on the U.S. Capitol, it says, on one hand, I was not terribly surprised because this is what I had been saying for 10 years. Mm -hmm. This is Peter Turkin. But he, he says, still, because it's so terrible, it was still startling. You know, at 7 Adventists, we preached that son-in-law was coming over 100 years, but it still will be startling to us. It says, watch now. All complex societies encounter periodic, periodic waves of internal instability. Turkin explains that we have entered an age of discord. discord. Now, watch what he says now. It says, you can't predict how the pressure which is building will be released. On the surface, the next couple of years until the elections could look fairly calm. But there will be things bubbling under the surface. I think elections are really flashpoints. 2022 is certainly going to be a flashpoint. Where are we right now? So this man in 2010 talked about this. And he said 2022 is going to be a flashpoint. Certainly it's going to be a flashpoint. In 2024 is the one where our system will really be put under the huge strain. Now, my brothers and sisters, if this is right, we should see a flashpoint in 2022. But we're not seeing a flashpoint on the Civil War, are we? Look what it says. After the FBI visits what? Donald, Donald Trump's. Well, that happened a long time ago. Mar logo outraged conservatives call for civil war. What do we see in 2020? Flashpoint. What do we see in 2020? Green fuzz. My brothers and sisters, civil war mentions double and extremist outlined spaces after the Mar Lago raid. What's that next word? Well, I don't think it's going to be in a civil war. Well, how many civil wars have you studied? Well, I haven't really studied civil war, but I've, that's not evidence. The experts. Evidence. 
It says, reference to civil wars doubled on online extremist platforms in the week following the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago. According to experts who monitor far right, far right and anti-government chatter, we saw a significant what? Uh-huh. Now, what is that telling us? What are we approaching at rapid speed in 2022? We may never make it to 2025. Which tells us we need to be choked, not in 2024. Mm-hmm. We need to be choked when? Yeah. And so I thought this morning I'll choke you. But not literally. To say to us what we know we need to be doing. We can't just say, well, you know what? We've been talking about this so long. We got to look at it. We got to take our children in hand, all of us. Our family, we had a meeting. We talked about it some more. This is, we, we can't come to the camp meeting and, and do this. We, we got to go closer. We got to go back to the Adventist home in the Bible and say, Lord, what do I need to do right now? I can't go through this right now. You, you understand, but I can't even go through this. This is talking about the economy now. This is talking about what's happening in 2020 with the economy. And the same 2025 plus month, same thing. Everywhere we go is the same thing. Now, but you know what the devil is doing in our mind? When we see something like this, you know what the devil says in our mind? It's the devil. He can't stop us from studying it. He'll say, oh, yes, let's go and reach the world. Is that what God's telling us? Well, we do need to reach the world, but that's not what he's telling us. In order to reach the world, there's a method in reaching the world. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you look at the world, we're getting ready to close on this. As we look at the world, we're talking about reaching the world. And the world has no idea what's about to take place. They know a crisis, but they have no idea the time of trouble such as it never was. They don't know anything about the mark of the beast and the sunny law. This, God has given us the third angel to warn the world and to bring the solution to the problems of life. So now, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to reach the world, we got to recognize that you don't reach the world by reaching the world. The world is made up of something. What's the world made up of? Talk to me. The world is, reached, is made up of nations. You don't reach the world by reaching the world. You've got to reach all the na- what? Nations. The three angels. It says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto every nation. So we've got to go from nation to nation. But listen, when God looks at that, he doesn't just see nations. You know that nations are made up of communities. That in order to reach the nations, we've got to reach the communities. God has a plan of reaching every community. You know we need to reach the richness community as a church? We need to reach this entire community. And every community we live in are a part of. But now, my brothers and sisters, we don't just reach the communities. And a community is made up of something. You know that in the community, at the heart of the community, guess what you have? A church. But the church, you don't just reach the church by reaching the church. You know the church is made up, talk to me, somebody, of the home. So in order to reach the world, guess what God has to reach first? He has to reach not a home. My home. My home. My family, we start and say, look, it's time to reach the world, but we'll never do it like that. Because if the problem, let's see what the problem is. Look what, look, Ministry of Healing, Relief Book, Ministry of Healing 349. Look what it says. The restoration and uplifting of humanity ends in the home. Then if we're not even dealing with the home, we're not even beginning to restore the world. We're not even beginning to uplift it. Now, my brothers and my sisters, what is the opposite of restoration? Destruction. Destruction. So then the destruction of the world, where does it begin? In the home. So if we're going to save the world, you know we have to show the world how to save? The home. I want to ask you a question. If my home is not saved, how am I going to go to the world and save their home? It's hypocrisy. Remember the story I began with? That little girl? Can you imagine that little girl? Can you imagine the mother taking that little girl to do a missionary tour to a community and tell them about plant-based diet after what she saw? Can you imagine that? What, tell me, what would it do to that little girl? What effect would it have? It says the work of parents underlies how many? Every other. Society is composed of families. And is what the heads of families make it out of the heart of the, are the issues of life. And the heart of the community. The heart of the, the heart of the, is the, the well-being of society, the success of the church. If the church is going to finish the work. The prosperity of the nation, America, China, Africa, Israel, wherever, depends upon what? Then where must Elijah be sent? Where must the messenger, where must the messenger be sent? To the home. And so when he came, you know what he said? When the messenger came, he shall turn the hearts, the fathers, to the children. And the children, the disobedient to the just, to make ready a people 
prepared for the Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, this depends on how much more he says. The Lord does not now work to bring many souls into the truth because of the what? Give me another name. Give me another name. Who have never been converted and those who are once converted but who have what? What influence would these unconsecrated members have on Why would God bring everybody from Richlands into this church from the Baptist, the Methodist, the Catholic and come in and we're living just like the rest of the world? Everything they eat, we eat. Everything they watch, we watch. Everywhere they go to school, we go to school. Everything music, we, we, everything is the same. No convert. We can pass sea and land to make one convert. And when we made him, we make him twofold more the child of hell than ourselves. God says, what influence would these unconsecrated members have on new converts? Would they not make of what? No, no effect the God-given what? Message. So then what good to have a messenger if the message has no effect? Which is to prepare us. So then what does God do? God says, I condemn the church. Is that what he does? He goes to the church and he knocks on Laodicea's door and says, if you let me in, if you let me speak straight to you, Amen. if you let me give you a straight testimony and choke you, I can, we can wake up together. Now, my brothers and sisters, it says in forming relationships with Christ, the renewed man is but coming back to his appointed relationship with what? Yeah. His first duty is not to the world or to the nations or to the community. His first duty is to his what? Children, Children and his nearest, nearest relatives. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. So instead of me just running out into the community at BTI, you know what we're going to do? We're going to look right here and say, what about our home? Amen. 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 Our wife, mm. our husbands, mm. our children, our sons, and our daughters. As for me and my house. That's how they, what they said when they went into the promised land. Now, my brothers and sisters, it says nothing can excuse him. Nothing can excuse him for neglecting the inner circle for the larger circle outside. Somebody said, well, I reached the world. Can you imagine? By the grace of God, to the glory of God, we've traveled around the world teaching this message. But listen, what would that mean if my own daughter is lost? That won't mean nothing to me. So thousands can come to me and say, minister, pastor, evangelist, I've been to your meetings all over the world. But listen, if my daughter is lost and my wife is lost and I'm lost, what should it mean to preach the gospel to others and myself be a castaway because I have a gap between knowing and doing? It says, will nothing can excuse from neglecting the inner circle for the larger circle outside in the day of final reckoning? Fathers and mothers will be asked, not what they did for the community, what they did and said to secure the salvation of the souls, they took upon themselves the responsibility of bringing into the world. Have you brought in children to this world? Then you're responsible for it. Well, I don't have time. I'm so busy reaching the world. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You should never have children. It says, did they neglect their what? Lambs. Leaving them to be the care of what? Strangers. A great good done for others will not counsel the debt you owe to God to care for your children. The spiritual warfare of your family comes second. Family and nearest relatives. That's how the early Advent church started. The early Advent churches go all over the world. They started with those that were nearest and dearest, we're told. Whenever you take up the duty that lies nearest you, then God will bless you. What if I don't do the work that lies nearest? What if I neglect my children's training, my wife's training, my own training, my family training, and then take up the training of the world and the church and the community? God's not going to bless that. It says, God will not bless it. There are too many doing outside missionary work while their own what? Households are left destitute of any such efforts, going to ruin through neglect. neglect. The first missionary work is to see that love, light, and joy come into the home, home circle. Let us not be looking for some great temperance, talking about health work, or missionary work to do until we have first done the duties where? At, At home. home. Every morning we should think, what kind of act can I do today? What tender word can I speak? Kind words at home are blessed sunshine. The husband needs them. The wife, you know, the first thing you do if you, when you see your wife, the first thing you do when you see your wife, you tell her some kind words. Amen. Say, I was reminded today, some kind words. When you see your husband, first thing what? First thing when you see your nearest relative, say something kind. Don't get back, oh, uh, what happened? You got the food ready? And then, no. <laughs> <laughs> kind words. The husband needs them. The wife needs them. The children need them. The children need them. 
The children need them. It says it ought to be the desire of what? Every heart to make as much heaven below as we're told that home should be all that the word implies. A little heaven upon this earth. I'm going to close right here. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us be faithful. Because I'm going to say as we conclude, as we close, we're going to John, Joshua 24, our last text. Go to Joshua 24. Go to Joshua 24 as we close. Joshua 24. Now, someone says, well, minister, pastor, evangelist, teacher, you told us about those expiration dates and the coming of the Lord and what have you, but I thought we were studying the ribbon of blue, <laughs> which is dress reform. This says, let us be faithful to the duty. Child guidance 425. Child guidance. Let us be faithful to the duties of the home life. Let your children understand that obedience must reign there. Teach them to distinguish. Now, this is what's supposed to be taught in the home. In the home. Teach them to distinguish between that which is sensible and that which is foolish in the matter of what? So part of what we're to teach in the home is what? The ribbon of blue. Dress reform. It says, and furnish them with clothes that are neat and simple. As a people who are preparing for the, is that not where we are right now in 2022, the soon return of Christ, yes or no? It says we should give the world an example of what? You remember the messenger before the first coming of Christ, when it identifies him, it identifies first, it says, remember, that this man, he wore a plain type of clothing. And then it said he ate a simple diet. So the messenger was identified by simple diet and simple dress. Mm -hmm. What should we see today in the messengers that prepare the way for the second coming? Simple diet and simple dress. It says we should give the world an example of modest dress in contrast with the prevailing what? Fashion, fashion of the day. Now, if we're going to reach the world, then we have to understand something about fashion. And what we're supposed to be studying today is what? Fig leaf fashion. We studied blurring the lines. We studied the light of dress reform. But now as we come further, we're going to study next week, Lord, next week? We study next week, fig leaf fashion. And it says, talk of these things over. And plainly, wisely, what you will do. Then carry out. In other words, don't just know it, do it. Carry out your plans where? In the church, community? What does it say? In what? In your families. I heard two people say it. No, no, it's <laughs> Carry your work where? In your what? Family. family. Praise the Lord. <laughs> In your families. Determine. What does determine mean? It might happen. Is that what it means? Make a decision. Determine to be guided by higher principles. In other words, whenever you make a plan for your family, don't let it be your plan. Let it be it is written. So any structure. What I'm telling you to do, I'm not making this up. I'm saying God told us this is what we do first. God gave us an order. Everything must be done in its order. It says... Determined to be guided by higher principles and notions and desires for your children. If our hearts are united with Christ's heart, nothing will be put upon the person to attract attention or to create controversy. Do you know that in, underst in understanding this, God is trying to change our what? Hearts. This morning, will you make a decision with me? Lord, I want to close the gap. I want to bridge the gap between knowing and doing. If I know the time, then I want to do what I should be doing in this time to prepare for what is soon to come upon this world as an overwhelming surprise. Now, if we do what we know, you know what that's going to create? A radical change. You know, some people say, well, we need to learn a lot more. You know, we don't need to learn a lot more to create a radical change. If we simply do what we know, we will be radically different than we were yesterday. We'll be radically different than we were today before we came to church. When we come from this church, don't just listen like a pleasant song, hear this sermon, and then go back. Lord, time is too short. What we do, we must do quickly. Joshua 24, we're closing. What does the Bible say? Joshua 24, in verse 14. What does the Bible say? Joshua 24, you know the text. Joshua 24, chapter in the 14th verse. It says, now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. truth. Do they have some things to put away, some things to clean, clean up? Yes. Wake up, clean up, stand up. It says, put away the gods which your father served. Even if your family did it, that don't make it good for you. Don't say if it was good enough for mom and pop, it was good enough for, no, it's not good enough for us. Verse 15 says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. 
whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In 2022, we don't have much time, my brother and sister. Someone says, but I've messed up. As a husband, father, I messed up. As a wife and mother, I messed up. As a son, a daughter, child, I messed up. How can God help me if I messed up? Now, maybe you have made some I mean, I make terrible mistakes. I don't know about you. Terrible, tragic mistakes. Have you ever made any mistakes? Have you? Have you ever made a mistake? Now, my brothers and sisters, if you see your sinfulness, do not wait to make yourself better. How many there are who think they are not good enough to what? Come to Christ. Do you expect to become better through your own? Do you think that we can say, you know what? I missed it so much, so I better stay away from God until I get my family right, until I get better. I, I'm not watching when I should. I'm, I'm watching the wrong things. I'm eating the wrong things. I'm looking at the wrong things. My family's wrong. I'm wrong as a young person. I wait until I get better, and then I'll come to God. We'll never, that will never work. It says, can the Ethiopian change his skin or a leper his spots? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to evil. There is help for us where? Only in God. We must not wait for stronger persuasions, for better opportunities, for holier tempers. tempers. We can do nothing of ourselves. We must what? Come, Come to Christ. Christ. How? Yes. You know that nobody has an excuse with that program. Someone says, well, I got a lot of sins. Well, come right now with those sins. Someone says, I have a lot of mistakes. Well, come with those mistakes. Come with me. You and your family, with my family, with our, all our mistakes, and let's come to Christ. And let's ask him, Lord, correct them one by one until he makes us just like Jesus. Then we'll be ready to go home. What do you say? Amen. That's my desire. Was that your desire? Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Help us to rightly interpret. Help us not to leave from this and forget what we heard, Lord, like a man that looks in America and then forgets what his face looked like. Help us to see, Lord, that the gap that is keeping us from Jesus is not what we don't know. There's so much more to learn, but that's not our problem. Our problem, Lord, is that we will not do what we know. And when we try to do it, we try to do it ourselves. But you said, without me, you can do nothing. Help us, Lord, to not try to fix ourselves first. Help us to come to Jesus, to come to you, individually and with our families, for me and my house. And if we will come, Lord, you will meet us just like we are and then fix us so that we will be prepared to meet you in peace. I pause the prayer that someone here today, some individual, some family, that says, Lord, I come just as I am without one plea, but that his blood was shed for me, and since he bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. If you feel like coming today, if you decide to come today, whether you feel like it or not, but you're coming, just raise your hand and say, Lord, by a raise of my hand, I'm coming. Praise God, young girl. God sees you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, young man. God sees you. Families, God sees you. Those on the Internet, God sees you. This is not a joke. If you're watching, raise your hand if you're serious. If you're not serious, you pray, God, Lord, help me because if I don't get serious now, I'm in bad shape. Do you want Jesus? Please. If your desire is to come to Christ, just as you are, just raise your hand wherever you are. Heavenly Father, you see every lifted hand. I'm lifting mine, not because I'm teaching, because, Lord, I need you. I want you so that we can say it for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Not by might nor by our power, but by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you did today and what you will do. In Jesus' name, bless every lifted hand. Amen.